Hello and welcome to HITC Sports. So how are we doing, lads? It's been a little bit of a while since we had a talk. Anything much happened while I was back in Ireland? Apart from Man City's bus getting obliterated and me losing my f***ing voice. A couple of you were wondering, Hey Irish guy, why do you sound different? Why do you sound like someone has shoved a spatula down your throat? Well, I'm back now, alright? Recording videos in an airport bathroom. It it doesn't go that well. But anyway, what we'll do today is take a look at every Premier League club's most annoying, most disliked, most all-around hated Premier League footballer. Alright, let's go. Arsenal, Aaron Ramsey. The thing with Arsenal is that none of their players are particularly disliked. I mean, we could touch on Hector Bellerin, whose relationship with his own fans is about as healthy as Charlie Sheen's lifelong one with condoms. And I mean, obviously, Jack Wiltshire probably needs to wear a bulletproof vest every time he walks down Seven Sisters Road. But we'll go for Aaron Ramsey, a man widely despised by Stoke fans for committing the cardinal sin of having his leg broken in a bunch of places when he was a teenager. Because f***ing logic. 19 years old gets his leg snapped in two by a thuggish tackle from your captain, so you decide to boo him for the next decade. Bournemouth, Tyrone Mings. Now, Tyrone Mings probably isn't a bad person, but if you go for a jog on somebody's skull, it's not exactly a great character reference. Last year, the Bournemouth centre half seemingly used Latan Ibrahimovic's head as a treadmill, was given a five-match ban, and effectively destroyed any chance he might have had of being signed for Manchester United. Having said that, I think those were already in ruins about 4,000 missed time tackles ago. Brighton, Leonardo Ujoa. Okay, so Chelsea fans probably don't hate Steve Sidwell. He's probably just a PTSD trauma flashback that Chelsea fans are probably just hidden away in the back of their skulls. You know, you know, it was that summer when Roman Abramovich decided to sit on his wealth and just let Mourinho sign a bunch of freebies. It was a bit like Susan Boyle winning Britain's Got Talent and yet still refusing to buy a f Comb. I'll go with Leonardo Ujoa though. I don't know how that manager managed to get off scot-free at Leicester City for basically going on strike when Ranieri was manager. Saying he'd never play for the club again. Last when Riyad Mahrez did that, the fans were practically burning shirts outside the ground. Ujoa does it and it's like, oh yeah, grand, yeah, off, off you go. No one gives a sh All the best, Leo, don't let the door hit you on the way out. I mean, it's like if Key Hopkins threatened her husband with a divorce, the poor f probably hand her the pen. Burnley, Ashley Barnes. Okay, let's be honest, Ashley Barnes is really only hated by one set of supporters. Chelsea fans, which made it all the more ludicrous that he was linked to Stamford Bridge in January. You know, besides the fact that this was Chelsea, and he was Ashley Barnes, a centre forward who was seemingly allergic to double digits in his entire career. So when Chelsea fans had their butler read them the news, they would have furiously adjusted their monocle and spat out their morning croissant. Or I don't know, whatever rich people eat. Five pound notes. But yeah, the Chelsea fans hate Barnes because he tackled Emmanuel Manu Matic in a mean way a few years ago. From the way the aftermath carried on, you'd swear he'd not only broken his leg, but sold it for spare parts on the M7 20 minutes after the game. Matic was banned for reacting angrily. Mourinho branded Barnes a criminal. Bet he pays his taxes though. And like, like he didn't even break his leg. Like, it was a dangerous thing. He didn't even... He didn't even break his leg. What was the fuss? Chelsea Sask Fabregas. Oh, usually there is loads to choose from at Chelsea. From players who shoot interns to men who break their brotherly code. And finally those who probably have a full on brawl with the dinner lady if she served him cold soup. Nowadays the Chelsea squad just seems to be, it seems to be really nice. And maybe that's their problem, not enough characters. Whereas before you'd have people like Michael Balak, Dennis Wise, don't make me get sick in my mouth. Nowadays, Danny Drinkwater. Oh yes, that's really a name to get the adrenaline pumping. Ross Barkley is one who should probably wear a scrum cap next time he's in his hometown. For obvious reasons, but I'll go for Cesc Fabregas. He seems alright off the pitch, doesn't he? On the pitch, he's pretty much universally despised. Frank Lampard has admitted that he never liked him. And Kevin Kilban called him a total arse. Highlighting an FA Cup game where League One Huddersfield turned up at the Emirates. And Fabregas decided to have a go at little Joey Good Johnson. Famous for nothing, saying, you're and your teammates are sh Yeah, and the sky's blue, Seth. Do you want to go to the crowd and start waving your paycheck around as well? Why not slag off Jim from the local butchers and Karen from Human Resources? Then again, I'd be really surprised by the antics of a man who used to go around chucking pepperoni pizzas at old men. Maybe it was pineapple. I mean, I, I could make allowances for that, considering pineapple tastes like fermented cat piss. And believe me, I know. Why am I weird? Crystal Palace, Yohan Kabai. You might think Yohan Kabai, obscure player, failed the PSG, winding down his career at Crystal Palace. Who gives a flying f about him? Well, Newcastle fans mainly. Probably for the fact that he went on strike back in 2013, trying to force for a move to Arsenal. 
doesn't tend to go down too well that one. It never happened. He went to PSG six months later and then came back to the Premier League to work with Alan Pardew, a man about as popular on Tyneside side as Maggie Thatcher. And if you just want a glimpse into what the Newcastle fans think of Kabay, go back to two seasons ago when the Frenchman missed a penalty at St James's Park. They loved it. Everton, Wayne Rooney. Here's what I don't get about the England team. I think it's fairly evident from the booing, slandering, and general references to Shrek that Wayne Rooney gets, despite that reference being about as relevant as Arsenal's last title win, that the English population pretty much despises the Everton man. But yet, I am pretty sure everyone around the country was willing him, was praying for him to be fit for the 2006 World Cup, as if he was their own flesh and blood. They would have celebrated every single one of his England goals. It's, it's, it's just fickle. Like, I don't, I, I don't, it's, it's just so fickle. HITC Sport, the Irish guy. Well, obviously on this channel, it's the Irish guy. With a scarf that looks like it was knitted by one of Stephen Ireland's dead grandmothers. Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Ah! If that f was anywhere closer to your screen, you'd be in your f living room eating your dinner. There's something that quite takes the sting out of Ireland not getting into a World Cup. Clearly, looking at the camera, it was too much of a f***ing hassle. Then watching England struggle against the likes of Iceland, and yeah, that, that's funny for me. What the f*** is he looking for? Christ, the look at the f***. The camera is the... Oh, for f oh it's ridiculous. Look at the camera, lad. Cry, wh why did you subscribe to this, lads? Hell. Huddersfield, Aaron Moy, Jesus Christ, Huddersfield are a top, Huddersfield's just an impossible one, alright? They really are, they're just a nice, friendly family club, no, it's just nice, it's just a nice club. You can't really hate or dislike any of their players, not even Paul into the sun, no matter how hard I try. It's just, it's just, it's just too nice a club. Having said that, as soon as I upload this, I, it's probably going to come out that Aaron Moy drowned squirrels in his bathtub. Leicester City, Danny Simpson. I won't, I won't dwell on this one too much for legal matters, but I think we all know that Danny Simpson might not be the most popular lad in the Premier League. I mean, great, he won the Premier League, he was probably the worst starting right back to ever win the Premier League, but um... Yeah, girls, if, well, uh, what am I talking about? There are no girls watch, watch this channel, especially not after that wag video. Uh, if, if there are any out there though, and you come across him on Tinder, for the love of Christ, swipe left. Liverpool, Dayan Lovren. Dayan Lovren received death threats from his own fans. I mean, lads, I get that he's a, a brutal defender in so many ways, but a bit far, really. Man City, Raheem Sterling. Fabian Delft would be a decent shout here, but we'll go for Raheem Sterling, a man so vilified in Liverpool that he was dropped from the Champions League tie at Anfield the other day. Every time he did touch the ball, the entire stadium just screamed abuse at him. Manchester United, Jesse Lingard. I know at least, I know at least one YouTuber who probably wishes Jesse Lingard never existed, considering every one of his Twitter updates is polluted with gifts of this fella sneezing into his elbow or whatever shite celebration. Look, I'll hold my hands up. Lingard is having an exceptional season, but I can't be the only one who thinks he has the most punchable face in England. Newcastle, John Joe Shelby. John Joe Shelby might be the modern day football villain and is probably the scariest looking father since Caitlyn Jenner. Hasn't done his reputation many favours. I mean, castrating Deli Ali in the opening day of the season wasn't a great idea. Look, I get it, John Joe. It must have been a tough start growing up as a teenager when the Harry Potter movies were doing bits. But lad, keep your temper in check. Southampton, Stephen Davis. I mean, let's be honest, Southampton players are probably pitied more than they are hated. For instance, I love Shane Long with all my heart after that goal against Germany, but at the same time, I understand that if he has another season of these performances, he'll be lucky not to be spending his Saturday mornings busking outside Tesco. Let's just say Stephen Davis purely for the Rangers connections. Tottenham, Deli Alley. In many ways, Deli Alley should be heralded praised and worshipped by England fans. Young lad break you through the lower leagues to become the next Steven Gerrard. But no, the kid gets booed at nearly every ground he goes to. Probably for the fact that he's clearly been studying the technique of Michael Phelps on YouTube. Lads, stay on your damn feet, it's not hard. I know you look like a malnourished 15 year old who's been living off celery sticks and fingernails your entire life, but still, a gust of wind shouldn't be enough to send you flying into next week. Just watch, that man is going to get booked for diving at the World Cup. Just, uh, I guarantee it. I mean, if he doesn't, I'll jump into the coldest lake I can find. Considering I can't swim, that's basically goodbye world. I really hope he dives now. Stoke City, Ryan Shawcross. Ryan Shawcross is the epitome of what Stoke used to be under Tony Pulis, which is enough for any football purist to want them dropped off the cliffs of Mohair. But it, when it's Arsenal that really have it in for Ryan Shawcross, on account of breaking Aaron Ramsey in two. It was basically a tackle that was lucky not to be charged as physical assault. Swansea City, Nathan Dyer. Swansea are a fairly ambivalent club. I mean, no one really cares 
about them too much. They don't really have any controversial or volatile players. Let's just go for Nathan Dyer. Uh, to be fair, I don't think he's particularly hated. I, I, I'm pretty sure no one gives a sh about him. I'm pretty sure you haven't thought about him yet today. Like, this was a professional footballer who was caught stealing mobile phones and cash from a nightclub. Well, I'm going to guess what he's not particularly hated to this day. I'm guessing that when people meet him, they keep one hand firmly wedged in their pockets. Watford, Andre Gray. Troy Deeney isn't exactly flavour of the month at Arsenal, but we'll go for Andre Gray. A man about as welcome on the LGBT scene as Mel and Gibson. West Brom, Daniel Sturridge. It's the dance. Good lord, it's the f***ing dance. West Ham, Joe Hart. I'm not actually sure why Joe Hart is one of the most hated men in the Premier League, but he is. Or at least he was when he was at Man City. Now people don't really pay too much attention to the shampoo expert as he struggles for game time at West Ham and desperately clawing at any chances to remain relevant ahead of the World Cup. But a few years ago, probably, probably when he was dancing in front of Perlo and screaming in the face of ball boys, I was, uh, yeah, that was when people didn't really seem to like him. Anyway, that's the end of the little lads. Good to be back. Feels good to be back. But yeah, plenty more rambling videos on the way. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, give it a share, and a subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.